the most revelatory account I have come across of a possible contact with an alien intelligence is the book Valis by Philip K. Dick. Aspects of the book that seem to be little understood are symbols that point to an encounter of some sort with what we can accurately term the Illuminati. Again, the messages in Valis are coded, and the meaning encoded are Freemasonic, comprising in fact a relatively exhaustive recapitulation of Freemasonic lore and agenda. That's from uh, Saucers of the Illuminati by Jim Keith in Adventures Unlimited Press Book. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Stench of Truth. <clears throat> I saw, uh, or I listened to, the interview that Glenn Beck uh, had with um, uh, Deborah Medina, who was running for uh, governor of Texas. And uh, it caused me to come to a... Um, a rather firm realization uh, uh, and a reaffirmation of something that I already knew about uh, Glenn Beck, and that is that he is a complete fucking ass. And uh, as far as any of these other supposed uh, freedom-loving uh, uh, right-wing jagoffs like Glenn Beck, uh, they are all, whether they are paid agents of the government or not, they are working to further the ends of the government by fomenting extremist behavior. And what did Glenn Beck decide to focus on whenever he had his little interview with Deborah Medina? Very condescendingly acting like, who is this woman? I've never heard of her. And then when he does have his interview, what does he focus on? Not on some of the great issues that she has, like border security and state sovereignty, but instead on the new Holocaust denial of 9-11 truth. Well, that's not the only new Holocaust denial, you know. The other new Holocaust denial is climate change. But he chose to focus almost entirely on the 9-11 truth movement in his interview of her. And uh, from what he was able to ascertain according to his limited intelligence, he was quite dismayed by her intelligent and rather straightforward answering of his queries on this subject. Because she had an open mind about 9-11, saying quite rightly, just like anybody else should who has half of a brain, which Glenn Beck apparently does not have. And that is that we do not have all the facts in order to make an informed decision. And this is what she said. Well, Glenn Beck didn't like that. He wanted her to categorically come out against 9-11 truth, as though we all have been given sufficient data to determine whether or not the government let it happen, caused it to happen, were behind it in some way, or what, in fact, the real truth of what occurred that day is, when, in fact, we don't have all the evidence to make that decision. He sounded like a government agent. While I doubt that a lot of these talking heads like Glenn Beck and others are paid by any government agency, they might as well be, because they are playing into their hands. And another such example is Alex Jones, talking about the National Guard being out in Pittsburgh, and how we are practically under martial law. Well, the National Guard is here. Is it newsworthy? Yes. Is it worthy of causing people fear, paranoia, and anxiety with tirades about martial law? No. Let us
us approach the news in an even-handed manner, not in a fear-causing, panic-causing manner, which Alex Jones is absolutely expert at doing. And while he does provide some good and interesting information, the vast majority of his effort is spent in causing that fear and paranoia, which is designed to cause extremes of behavior in certain people that listen to him. And while he may not be paid by the government to do that, he might as well be because it plays into their hands for increasing their surveillance and police state activities. And the very fact that he does that, while at the same time claiming to be against it, makes him all the more suspect to me. The same way it does with Glenn Beck and all the other talking heads who claim to be for one thing, but in actual fact, everything that they do promotes the very thing that they are supposed to be against. So Glenn Beck can shove it as far as I'm concerned. And if I never see his face again, it will be too soon. And if I never have to hear his stupid, moronic, idiotic, two-brain-celled voice again, it will be way too soon. And if he even tries to call himself any kind of journalist, I hope other journalists will be so offended that they will beat the living crap out of him. Thank you.